Hi, I'm Larry McAtee, Ward 3 City Councilman. What a delight it is today to have as our guest on our program, Michael Burns, President of the Oklahoma City Red Hawks. Michael, thank you for taking time to come down and visit with us. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for including me. Now, we're, we're doing this filming uh, the first part of June, and we've just concluded the Red Hawks have the first half of their season. Is that right? That's right. As of uh, the end of this homestand, we're officially 36 games at home. So uh, before you know it, it, April and May have zoomed by, and now we're halfway through the season. Team's playing really well, though. Well, let's share that. Some, some, you got a lot of enthusiasm about that. You've just finished the homestand. And I think the record was what, 10 and 2? 10 and 2 during that homestand, yep. And uh, we actually, during that period of time, um, going back a little while, we set a, uh, a Red Hawks record because we had 14 consecutive wins um, at home. Uh, so that would have been over May and June. So it was really exciting for our players, our manager, and, uh, and the fans to be able to, can you show up at the ballpark? And I think you're going to win tonight. Hey, that's a, good, that's a good spirit to be have going for you. Sure. Isn't it? Now, uh, You've also had the, the benefit of having some of your players already promoted up to the bigs this year, haven't you? We have. We've had, uh, we've had a couple guys that have made the trip up to, to Houston, and uh, most recently uh, an outfielder, Fernando Martinez, um, and then our third baseman and first baseman, uh, Brett Wallace. Both of them are really hitting the ball very well, and so it's great to see them get their opportunity in Houston uh, and, and hopefully stick with the big league club. Now, the big leagues, of course, are interested in the development of the players, but you've got the total business responsibility for the uh, franchise, don't you? It's a unique relationship. Yeah, we work very closely with the Astros, and they, they really make all the decisions uh, about who's playing and how much they're playing and who's pitching tonight and all those types of things. And then we get all the fun of operating the facility. So we, we work to get the tickets sold and uh, make sure we get the gates open and we entertain the crowd very well and the clean ballpark. Uh, you know, we really concentrate on some of those elements to make sure the, the full fan experience is great. Well, you talked about cleaning the ballpark. Since you uh, all took over at Mandalay, you've made some uh, quite a few enhancements to the cleanliness or the appearance of the ballpark, haven't you? We, we have. You know, uh, I, I'm a firm believer that uh, minor league baseball is really it's about family entertainment. Um, and if you want to bring a family out, you want it to be in a safe, clean environment. So we've just put an extra emphasis on uh, making sure the ballpark's clean. Uh, uh, it's cleaned well overnight, and so as soon as we open the gates, it looks like it's uh, you know hasn't been anything going on in weeks. We want to make sure it's nice and clean, and uh, we keep it up during the the course of the game as well. So, um, you know, the clean ballpark, great entertainment, and great customer service. Those are the three things that we're constantly concentrating on. Let's talk about that. Uh are those efforts bearing fruit? How's, how's the attendance been this year, first half of the year? You know, we're seeing a, a great response from the community, um, and, and we're thankful of that. Um, so um, our, our ticket sales staff, they work hard all off-season long. Um, people often ask us, what do you do in the off-season? And it's, it's doing all the prep work in, in, in advance of opening day. But they, they did a great job selling ticket packages and getting people in the community uh, and businesses uh, involved. So uh, our ticket package sales were up about 5%. Uh, and then now they're working through group outings. So it could be churches, it could be youth sports groups, it could be uh, rotary clubs, getting them out to a once a summer type of outing. So our, our group sales are very strong. They're up about 50%. Um, so regionally, everyone's really supporting the, the ball club and, it, and it's been nice to see all the people coming out. Well, that was my next question. So you led right in. Regionally, you just don't look for fans from Oklahoma City itself, but you've got a much broader market that you're looking for. We do. We do. We have, there's about 16 people on our staff that concentrate solely on the ticket sales. Um, and uh, six of them are, are really focused on the group sales element. And so they're calling on churches and businesses and all those groups I mentioned within a 90 mile, 100 mile radius, mm -hmm. really. Um, and and we, see, you know, we see a great response because people want to come to Oklahoma City. They want to enjoy maybe a weekend in Bricktown uh, and, and mix in a baseball game as part of that. So uh, it, it, I think we've seen a good response because we're calling and asking and, and then people are really, they're putting together a, a nice summer outing as a part of that. Uh, but the feedback we always hear is it's great to come to the ballpark. Uh, it's great to have that experience in Bricktown because they're going out and eating and shopping and doing all the things uh, that make Bricktown so great. So um, it, it's, it's a great draw to come to Oklahoma City and, and spend some time down there. Now I get excited uh, because you, you give me now a scorecard that I can keep score on and I'm watching the game, but there's a lot more that goes on at the ballpark than just watching the game itself, even though the Red Hawks are winning. What can the fan expect if he or she comes to the ballpark? You know, I, there's there's two people to really appeal to. There's there's someone like yourself that's really probably scoring the, the game. The wacko. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I love seeing those folks out at the ballpark, uh, particularly when they're teaching a youngster how to score a game. Um, it's not as easy as one may think. That's right. Um, and, and then there's, there's, other, there's families that may just be looking for something to do on a Friday night. Um, and so... 
uh, mom may be a fan or dad may be a fan, but there's four of them all together. So we want to uh, provide some great entertainment that's appealing to uh, everyone at all ages. Uh, so we have a director of entertainment and her, her sole job really, is she scripts everything that happens from the moment we open gates till the last fan leaves. And it's as specific as what song is playing and what is, what's the script being mentioned uh, on the field. We, all the on-field entertainment, uh, whether it's getting some kids to do a sack race or whether it's, uh, um, we have one that we call Soar and Score, which is fun because we kind of shoot some water balloons at someone with a glove. They're trying to catch it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the fans love to see the water balloons splash all over the, the, uh, their fellow fan. Um, but all those fun entertainment things uh, allow us kind of 90 seconds between every, every inning to do something that's fun. Uh, and, and the family kind of walks away. Um, hopefully they're, they're walking away from a Red Hawks win, but if we didn't win, they're still happy because it was a fun way to spend three hours at the ballpark. Now, besides the entertainment, uh, you can also have a pretty good time eating down there, can't you? You can. And yeah. we won't tell our mayor who's got this uh, diet program going here, but uh, what can a fan expect down there as far as uh, enjoying some good food? I, I think the, that's part of the ballpark experience is getting out there and, and enjoying it. Uh, uh, this year, we've actually brought the experience up to the concourse level, if you will. So we're, we're doing a lot more of the cooking, whether it's the popcorn or grilled onions and peppers to go along with your, your sausage and brats. Uh, we're doing it on the concourse. So I, I like to say that brings the fifth sense into play. You're smelling all of these great things. Um, but we've, we put a big investment in, in the off-season into the concessions. We wanted to make sure that there was great offerings and it was a um, great price. Uh, we've kind of redid the look and feel of all the concession stands. So they have a new brick facing and new signage, uh, new menu boards, uh, a lot of new equipment to support all the different menu items. So all that together makes for a really great uh, experience. And um, you can get your traditional hot dog or you can get a, you know, uh, a steak sandwich at Steakadelphia or uh, you might get a cheesesteak nachos out there. Um, we have a lot of new twists on the hot dog uh, opportunity. There's, there's some specialty dogs, maybe with pulled pork and coleslaw on a hot dog. Um, all in all, it makes people uh, pretty excited to kind of come out and test the different things that are going on throughout the concourse. Good excuse to get off your diet and just kick back and relax for a couple of hours. You know, for one night on a Saturday, just come out, enjoy the Why ball not? game, and, <laughs> and have a hot dog that maybe doesn't fit the diet. Absolutely. <laughs> now, you've had some special events going on, and before we came on camera, you were telling me about a real meaningful one that you just uh, concluded. How about sharing with our viewers what that was? Sure. One of the, we, we had a real special opportunity over the weekend. Um, it was through our Hometown Heroes program. Uh, which we, uh, we've been lucky to partner with Devon Energy. They provide us this opportunity to really, uh, the point of it is uh, to recognize the families of our servicemen and women. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we do a number of things over the course of the season. So uh, most nights we, we may have one of the families that has a loved one deployed. We'll have them out to the ballpark and give them a behind the scenes tour. Um, you know, get the, the kids out onto the field, get them to sit in the dugout and get an autograph, uh, give them a goodie bag. But really for one night, hopefully just kind of turn off the fact that you know, maybe mom or dad is, is deployed at that mm -hmm. moment. Uh, we've done a couple nights where we do a big celebration night, so everything that night centers around the military. Uh, we, did, uh, we did one uh, in May, and so we had uh, a swearing-in ceremony for about 40 um, uh, young airmen. Uh, we also had a, a recognition of about 30 recently um, uh, folks came back from deployment, so we got to get them out on the field and, and uh, recognize them. Um, and then one of my favorite things is we went through all the, uh, the songs of each branch of the military and asked people to stand up and be recognized. By the end, it's basically the entire stadium is standing up and that's pretty special. Um, so this weekend we, we did a, a new event. It was our, we called it our milestone day. Mm -hmm. And so what we wanted to do was, was kind of bring some awareness to, um, you know, military folks, to them it's pretty ordinary to miss some important events in life. And, and when you have the conversations, they typically say, it's just part of what I signed up for. Um, and I know my upbringing, my, my parents didn't miss a thing, uh, whether it was a, a ball game or you know, a play or whatever. Uh, so that's odd to me um, that it's so ordinary and, and part of their everyday lives. So we actually took an opportunity to, to kind of celebrate everything they may have missed while on deployment. Hmm. So it could have been a child's birthday. It could have been Mother's Day or Father's Day. Uh, maybe it's an anniversary that they missed. Uh, so we had um, 11 families that came out to the ballpark for a couple hours before the game and really kind of actually had all those celebrations in one. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had a birthday cake, we had our mascots there to help sing happy birthday, and we did an uh, anniversary toast for those that maybe missed uh, their anniversary. We had some crafts so the kids could create a Mother's Day or a Father's Day card uh, one time again. Uh, so we did a lot of neat events that, that just gave us a chance to say thank you. 
And then during the game, we brought all those families out onto the field. Mm. And uh, such a special response from the community, all the fans just standing up and giving them a standing ovation. Um, I think it, it gives them that special feeling that they know they're supported. Uh, Oklahoma City does such a great job of supporting our military. And that was one more way, I think, for the team just to, to embrace um, that opportunity as uh, something that we have in a very public way to say thank you to our servicemen and women. Well, that's great. And mm -hmm. baseball, of course, has been such an integral part of our national fabric. Uh, you also got something coming up in August you were sharing uh, to try to even improve the uh, interest in baseball for the coming up generations. How about sharing with our viewers what you've got lined up possibly for the uh, Oklahoma City School District? People? Certainly. Absolutely. We, we, we kind of huddled internally and, and talked with one of our partners, Hertz, about how do we improve uh, baseball in the community? That was really the goal. And we came up with really kind of three key ways to do it. Um, and so on the second half of the season, we'll be doing uh, each of these items. One is working with uh, local coaches, uh, primarily middle school, junior high, uh, and utilizing Tony DeFrancesco, our manager, mm -hmm. who's been a AAA manager now for I think a dozen years. His expertise, um, maybe he can help provide some drills on instructing the game. Also maybe utilizing some of the area college coaches um, and even some of the experienced high school coaches. Helping these individuals that, that are interacting with our youth on a daily basis and, and keeping their interest in baseball alive. Um, we're also, we're gonna include our groundskeeper, uh, something uh, really simple, and it was his, his suggestion, Monty McCoy, to say, hey, a lot of these fields, uh, you know, I can be helpful with simple tasks, simple tricks to, to keeping the field in good mm -hmm. shape. Uh, and then we're also gonna work with um, a lot of the youth that are part of baseball programs. Um, and so we're gonna have some instruction from our players, uh, again, that coaching staff, uh, work with them uh, out at the ballpark on, a, on an afternoon with some of these skills and, um, and working through some of the key things about how to develop that passion for baseball. And then invite them out to the ball game that night so they can come see the Red Hawks and all those guys that they probably interacted with one-on-one -on -one during the day, they can see them on stage and, and performing. And so I think it'll be a neat way to, to engage some more people with baseball and, and continue with uh, our national pastime, like you say, and, and something I have a lot of passion for. You can tell that you have a lot of passion for baseball, Michael, because you were a former player and uh, went to college with the hopes of playing until you got a little uh, shoulder challenge. That's right. But uh, appreciate what you're doing for Oklahoma City. One last thing, uh, July 3rd is your big 4th of July celebration. That's right. And so uh, we'd like to invite all the fans to come out for that and be a part of the baseball fever and also the patriotism that goes with the 4th of July celebration, even though it's going to be on the 3rd this year because you guys are out of town. That's exactly right. Yep, It'll be a great Independence Day celebration, huge fireworks show, and, and a fun way for us to, to celebrate. So thank you for mentioning that. Michael, thanks for coming down. Uh, I hope you've caught the passion that Michael has for our pastime, uh, national pastime baseball. Get at the kids, get the family, come on down to the ballpark. I'm not going to sing, take me out to the ball game, because that would drive the crowd away. <laughs> but the, thank you, Michael, for what you're doing for baseball, for Oklahoma City, and for the youth in Oklahoma City for the next generation. And uh, may God bless you as you continue this effort. Come see the Red Hawks, and let's get together behind them. They got a chance to win the championship this year. Let's keep them in first place.